and welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about, and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six-figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I am here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm so excited to introduce my guest today. We have Sarah Verber. She is a trained historian, intuitive tarot reader and astrologer. Her YouTube channel explores astrology and tarot through the lens of mysticism and archetypes. She also runs the Magic Seekers and Magic Makers circles on Patreon, where sensitive souls can gather. She's worked one-on-one with hundreds of people to help them reconnect with their intuition. She also holds a BA and an MA in history, and she lives in Stockholm, Sweden, with her husband and their dog, Bjorn. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to be here. So, okay. I have so much that I want to ask Sarah about. Sarah has been in my world via the magic of YouTube for a, a long time and we have a lot in common like she's obviously as you can tell she's from America she's emigrated and yeah I did, wasn't even doing astrology um for clients when I first you were, were kind of one, one of my main influences in really helping to create astrology um make astrology really digestible and I just love her business and the way that she has created a community around her work and she has a really amazing Patreon community which I'm a part of and and really love so I'm really excited to dive into behind the scenes and who she is and how she's you know built this incredible community and way of serving people online so I would love to know Sarah like how did you get into becoming an online astrologer and intuitive guide Oh, thank you so much, too, for all of that. That's so amazing to hear that I got to be an influence in your own journey because I saw some of the ways that you were working with astrology. I thought that is so fun and so creative. And that's what it's all about, like having that warm, juicy feeling about it. So I love that. Um, Yeah, so it's been such a journey to get here. I feel like the first part of my life, I felt like I had to kind of play a role. So I kept kind of all my studying, all that kind of mystic self really behind the scenes in all of my teens and my twenties, I was practicing and studying, but doing it kind of (laughs) hidden in the background of my cover story in life, you know, studying history, which I loved. Um, But that was kind of my way of feeling legitimate in this world and working random jobs for a while I was in like special collections and library work and I kind of always kept this part of myself hidden and suppressed because it felt like it wasn't allowed like I wasn't allowed to express this part of myself fully uh, beyond my really close friends and my little community and that secret part of my life. And I went through this really intense period. It was very Saturn return for anybody who's worked with Saturn return. It was so that because I went through this horrible breakup and just hit this really tough place. And as I was doing a lot of hiking and sitting in nature, I just felt this call to just try it, see what happens if I just started to put work out there and kind of come out to the world (laughs) with this this part of myself. Um, And I really had no expectations about it. I just didn't know what was next. My life was kind of in this really deep flux place of who am I and what is the point of any of this if I don't follow something that feels really true to me. So I uh, went for it. I I set up my Instagram, my YouTube, and I just started making things. And it just opened for me in a way that 
surprised me. Um, and for the last seven years, that has just continued to unfold and be really, really beautiful and magical and has taught me so much. When I look back at Sarah that began this journey, wow, I did not know <laughs> everything I was going to learn and all the perspective shifts I was going to have. So, yeah. And I would love for you to give us like just a bit of a kind of recap on how you've built your community on YouTube. Like, how was that experience for you? I know YouTube is very different now than it was back in the day and it's constantly changing. Um, so how have you found, you know, what was it like in the beginning compared to like, what's your relationship with it now? Yeah, it's been a really, really dynamic relationship. That's for sure. I think when I started, it was this beautiful thing where there was a wave of tarot and astrology that was really blooming and people were really enjoying that. So I kind of was riding that initial um, really positive wave. And so it really was so organic. It felt like I didn't have to do much. I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, what is going on here? This is growing so quickly. Um, and I kind of had to figure it out in real time. Like, what am I doing? How is this going to work? Um, and then, yes, it's really changed over the years. Um, I think for me, I kind of found my really true voice in that process. And with that, I had to also decide, you know, did I want to keep doing what was just popular and just keep the numbers running and make everything like look really good on the outside as far as success, or if I wanted to start following what was truer for me. And that's been the last few years. It's been really scary because what if I disappear? What if I become irrelevant? But I think it's so important when you're creating and you're creating community like that, you're re you really stay connected to yourself because if you let yourself get scattered to the winds, the work gets very, it dissolves. It's almost like that energetic frequency that you create by staying true to yourself really brings the people that want to be with you to you and I think that's something I've had to learn <laughs> multiple times that you really have to find what it is that really makes you come alive in the work you're doing otherwise it's just really unsustainable you just burn out and you just never want to show up so yeah that's such a powerful message particularly with for anybody who's building community and a business on social media because yeah, it changes all the time. And something that maybe worked really well for you in the past kind of like just stop working. And it's so easy to give our power away to like, oh, well, it's not the same anymore. So then I'm going to fail instead of being like, well, no, I was the one that made this work in the first place. And no matter, you know, I'm always going to evolve. Everything is always going to evolve, but it's me. Like I'm the one that's making it work. It's my desires. It's my intuition. It's you know, my connection or my desire for true connection with my community. And like, well, as soon as, yeah, as long as we stay true to that, like you say, people will always find us and we'll always find a way to connect with people, no matter how many like strategic things we might need to evolve or shift or let go of. Um, I think everybody's feeling that right now, <laughs> you know, that's the social media game. Like it's just constantly evolving. And sometimes it can feel like a little bit of a battle with the algorithm if we allow it to, you know, instead of just coming back to people are everywhere. And as long as you're willing to show up for them and, you know, find ways to connect, there will always be that. So I'm so curious um, what kind of drove your decision making for the business model that you have. Um, and, and obviously you, I don't know, like everything. I know you have your Patreon community, then I'm presuming you do like one on one astrology readings I'm curious how that kind of like unfolded for you yeah so the beginning I had obviously the YouTube work that I was doing and then I predominantly focused on one-on-one -on -one. so the first like four or five years that's what I was doing you know it would be I put out those materials and then just spend time one-on-one -on -one with people and the last couple of years I've been really focusing much more on the group and community things over on Patreon I am planning on returning to more one-on-one -on -one work because um, I love it so much. Like it's really rich, it's intimate, and there's just a different feel to it than the, the more dispersed uh, sharing, which is great too. And I love that. So those are kind of the three levels. Um, and I have like a lot, so many ideas in my head. And part of the problem for me is just doing it all. <laughs> 
resume. <laughs> there, yes. And that's always, and, and that's a challenge. I think I'm going to continue to be thinking through and figuring out ways to use my energy um, wisely uh, so that I'm not spreading myself too thin because um, that's very easy to get into that. So those are kind of the three levels. Yeah. You um, know what your, your human design type is. I believe I'm a manifesting generator. Yeah, me too. We're like the same oh, person, are. obviously. <laughs> wow. I need to learn so much about human design. So many people have been bringing it up to me. Um, in just like the last month, it is a very strong energy out there right now. Yeah, because it's based on astrology, but it also brings in gene keys and I think a couple other things too. But yeah, I think I think you'll like it. It's different, slightly different vibes to astrology, but still a lot of the same principles and knowledge and you know the placements of the planets. There's all of that kind of stuff in there as well. But yeah, manifesting generator is like wants to do all the things, wants to follow the excitement in all the directions and yeah we have to give ourselves permission to do that like that's how we are at our best as an energy type so 100 mm -hmm. resonate with everything that you're saying hey i have a really exciting new free series that i want to make sure you know about it's called sign soulmate clients with astrology and i created this because when i work with clients using their astrology charts they stop trying to sell offers in a way that feels like pushing a boulder up a hill they start selling what they're really excited to offer. They raise their rates, often doubling them, and soulmate clients start showing up more quickly and easily than ever, which is why I'm so thrilled to share this special three-part training series with you to show you how to read specific parts of your chart to cut the drama of overthinking your storytelling and your prices and cut straight to the actions and insights that lead to signing soulmate clients consistently with ease month after month. So when you sign up, you're gonna get instant access to video number one, which is all about signing soulmate clients by selling from your sun sign. Video number two is about tapping into your sales flow through your second house. And video number three is going to show you how to create your unique ritual for consistent clients and money flow. You don't need to know anything more than your birth time, date and place. And I will show you what you need to know about your birth chart. This is for anyone looking to create a more consistent flow of sales from soulmate clients. And you can find this by going to my website with sarahmack.com under the freebies tab or by the link in my bio on my social channels. I want to make sure you know about my newest offer, which I'm so excited about. It's the Soulmate Client Astro Mind, which is a 12 week mastermind that I created to support creative entrepreneurs to really master signing soulmate clients through authentic storytelling. And I created this because when I started using my astrological birth chart to find clarity and confidence on which parts of my story to share to attract the right people into my high ticket coaching offers, I started attracting dream come true soulmate clients into offers priced from 3K to 17K with no sales calls, which I haven't done a sales call in five years. And I put all of that extra free time towards writing my book and songwriting. I also stopped getting money objections. I never need to have this conversation anymore. Now clients enroll themselves from my content or a brief chat via email or DMs. And I developed unshakable confidence in my prices and put an end to overthinking and undercharging when I launched new offers, which made it easy for me to have 10K launches with just a few new clients from my small core audience of a few hundred people. And I stopped attracting clients who would drop out, turn on me or not fully show up for the work. I've only worked with absolute soulmate clients consistently for years. Many who have become meaningful ongoing relationships and friendships. And many of my clients will renew their contracts multiple times. This is what it looks like to work with soulmate clients. When you sign up, you're gonna get some tailored content and money alignment prompts from me based on your unique astrology chart and your unique strengths, gifts, and challenges in your life and your story and your relationship with money. We'll get 12 weeks together, two monthly group coaching calls, and you're gonna get support from me in Voxer for feedback on your content. You can ask any questions, any mindset stuff, any content or strategy stuff, and I will be there to brainstorm with you, give feedback and edits. 
And I'm also gonna create for you some exclusive trainings on astrology and using it to write content that sells and to transform your relationship with money and sales. You can sign up by going to my website with sarahmack.com under the work with me tab, or feel free to DM me and chat about if this is a good fit for you. I have a question. One thing I love about the way that you've created community is that you name your people space blobs. And I'm so curious, was that like a strategic, you know, branding move to create a sense of community or did it just kind of like come out of your mouth one day and then you were like, I'm going to run with this. It was very organic. Um, (laughs) It's something that I felt about myself for so long and it's like a running joke with my friends and, you know, my family and, Uh, just this feeling of having this one internal experience and then moving around the world and trying to pretend like I don't know so and I realized so many people would resonate with that and I think at some point I was just like you know what let's just own this and run with it and it's really it's one of those funny things because it's a little bit of a double-edged sword on the one hand some people who get it they get it like as soon as they see it they're like yes I know what you're talking about some people are very confused (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what what is a space blob I don't know what you're well, what is about. a space blob I think that's a good question <laughs> like yeah what? well I mean it can be whatever you want it to be for me it's that feeling of and I think this is something everybody's different on this front but that feeling of being kind of this cosmic being that's always on these different levels but has to remember to come back here and move through the day and having that dual experience, I think. I think I also associate it with being really intuitive and sensitive and really feeling the world around you. And yeah, so those are some of the levels that it makes me think of. Do you you relate? Are you- Oh, 100%. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like a space blob blobbing around all day long. But sometimes I wish I was more of a space blob than I am. You know, I think think one of the beautiful things about you and your content is you're really great at articulating just like, the messy middle of our emotional existence you know that like relationship between emotions and the physical body and you're really good at putting that into words in your content and yeah I think it's very comforting for people who do you know are highly sensitive and deep thinkers and in a world where we're constantly bombarded with messages and information and flashing things on screen so it's yeah your content is really just like a moment of respite and you know replenishment for sensitive souls so I I really appreciate your your skills around that thank you so Um, much that really means a lot I am so curious like astrology is so in depth and yeah I love the way that you teach it hand in hand with the tarot um I'm curious kind of what your personal practice with astrology looks like day to day like how do you use that in your own life I use it with a really light hand these days, you know, after all these years working with it, um, it changes the way you work with it, I think, as a practitioner, which is always really interesting. And um, I think I'm always evolving with it. So sometimes I will normally have phases where I might be exploring a different aspect of myself. Um, Like I'm a Sagittarius rising. So I might spend one season of my life really focusing on developing that and taking care of that part of myself and being really interested in what that means and how that's expressing and evolving. And then I may spend another season focused on that Virgo moon energy and just exploring it and seeing what elements of myself I want to help give support in my life, in my world. Um, And then actually tarot is really interesting. Uh, I have to take little breaks from it because you can get a little too into it, you know, but I actually have been recently coming back to just pulling a card for myself every day and exploring the storytelling, exploring the, the way that I'm like communing with the energy of the world. Um, That's been really, really powerful for me. And then innately every week uh, on my Patreon, we do our weekly uh, check-in where I'm running through kind of what's going on. And I, that is an opportunity for me every week to kind of think about where I'm at and where the world's at. I I think a lot of sensitive people are also tapped into those collective energies. And for me, that's one of the most helpful ways that I use it because I can have an easier time discerning between what is mine 
and what might be something that I'm feeling in the atmosphere. Uh, and that has been really, really helpful for me over the years. Yeah. I love that. And I think, um, you know, as healers, guides, coaches, like that's the real beauty of having this kind of a business is you really do get to choose, you know, how do I want to serve people and aligning that with the things that you really want to go deeper in and, or you want to bring more presence and intention and follow through around. And I think that's such a, that's one reason why I love astrology because it is so cyclical and kind of defined in the way that things change all the time. And there's this kind of anchor for you to connect to you and to reflect on. Um, but I think, you know, a lot of coaches are listening and, and often we can come, come up against moments in our business where, especially when you're, you know, you're marketing and you're growing and you're trying to build where it can get kind of repetitive because you want to create a name for yourself around something and, you know, reach more people and, I know, you know, I've had this conversation myself and with friends, whenever you come up against the moment where you feel like, oh, this is feeling kind of boring now, or I feel like I'm being a bit robotic and repetitive, like there's always another concept that you can dive deeper into and, you know, and and reflecting on where we want to grow and then building our offerings and, you know, and our content and, and offers around those things. And we always get to do that and to keep evolving. And I think that's, it can often be challenging, right? Because sometimes we can be coming up against our edges and that can trigger like feelings of imposter syndrome or if we get kicked into resistance. Um, But that's really, you know, in making that commitment with our community creates an opportunity to follow through and really walk our talk and to lead others as well. I, I don't know if, you know, anything comes to mind for you about like lessons or periods that you've been through and all like pivots in your business where that has felt true for you. Yes, definitely. I think the times that I've been the most scared and overwhelmed about change and growth are normally the times that I'm actually the most relatable and the most able to create connection with the people who want to work with me deeper. So that's something every time I will think, oh no, (laughs) I'm having this big, you know, discomfort where I'm changing and I don't know how to manage this and what is this going to look like and then I will decide to maybe go with that and create something that's acknowledging that and that's where the magic is so that's what I would say as an encouragement is that that relatability and that vulnerability and that connection to kind of the mysteriousness of the creative expression is so comforting to work with people where you feel like they understand where you're coming from, right? Like, oh, you also understand what it means to be on the edge of growth where it's scary. You also understand what it means to not really know who you're becoming and like, how do we work with that? So uh, that's been a huge lesson time and again. (laughs) Yeah, it just brings me back to you. I remember, you know, some of the early mindset work that I was doing when I started my business one of the beliefs that really shifted a lot for me was I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, it's like almost like creating a new comfort zone. And I think sometimes I just said something I constantly have to remind myself of, you know, especially when I've been doing things for, you know, the years are kind of passing by and I'm like, Oh, you know, I I'm pretty good at some of these things now. Whereas before I had to be really present and intentional. I've kind of like embodied skills at deeper levels but yeah there's always another level and it's like that moment you start to coast and get a little bit comfortable then the contrast is even bigger when you're like oh no like the continual growth will is inevitable and I kind of just went through that in launching my first group astrology offer you know I'd been kind of like bringing it in and like safe ways like as freebies you know bonuses for existing clients and kind of doing work with clients I already had behind the scenes with astrology and then starting to sell some um some readings here and there you know like one-offs but then going ahead and and creating a whole program around it yeah it feels like an edge and I know it always feels like from the outside looking in people like yeah of course that makes sense you know but from the inside it can feel like even the smallest shift in like your brand and your content feels like you're like rebirthing and you're just like a whole new person and um yeah it can be it brings up a lot, but it's so fun and exciting to, to do something new. So I would love to know, like, what is your vision for your, for your business and for your work that you're currently working towards? 
Oh, there's just so many business or so many ideas that um, are floating through right now and have not really made it into concrete form yet. Um, next year, it's possible I'll be doing a retreat in Sweden here, uh, which is kind of it's still, you know, in the works. But um, I have a good friend who has a spot. So we're we're talking um, and that I think will be amazing because I'm doing doing so much online work, which is amazing getting to hang out with people from everywhere. But I think that uh, physical space of renewal, it will be such a new thing for me to do like a retreat. So that's going to be an edge. <laughs> it's going to be a growth for me. Um, I also, I have a lot of vision of including possibly even a new uh, channel. We'll see that includes more of my life here in Sweden. I've learned so much from this place and I think it's really intriguing and interesting and I have so much to share about that. So I think that really for me helps explore some of the philosophical things that are outside of astrology as well. And I think they work really well hand in hand, but um, that's another vision I'm having. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty big one. Um, and then, yeah, I'm looking forward to developing some new one-on-one -on -one tools with, for people getting back to doing some of that really great one-on-one -on -one work. So yeah, those are some of the big things I have in store. So exciting. Yeah. I've really been feeling the pull to be like in rooms with other bodies after being online for such a long time. I think it's like everyone's feeling it after the, you know, 2020 Zoom hangover that we've all been through in recent years. So yeah, that's so exciting. I can't wait to hear more. I've never been to Sweden, but I am definitely excited to visit it one day. So yay, thank you so much for coming and being here and sharing your magic. And um, please, can you just let everyone know who would want to find out more about your work? Where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube. That's where the kind of meat of my work, if you just want to dabble is, you can find me under my name, Sarah Verba. You can also find my my on Instagram under that handle as well. And then if you're interested in deep diving or just having community or being a fellow space blob, um, you can find me on Patreon. I have a couple of different tiers and this whole October, and I don't know when our conversation is going live, but it will be available beyond October. We are focusing on intuition and I will be doing four masterclasses in this topic and really giving people this rich permission to, to dive in and feel that and some ways that I think working with intuition can be so expanded and we can think about it in some new ways. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah. Yay. It's so much good stuff. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. And thank you everybody. If you know someone who would love this conversation, please share this and please support the show by leaving me a review on iTunes and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.